In this video, I'm going to show you the steps I took in order to build this beautiful live edge kitchen table. Before we get started, I wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. There's not going to be any video in this because it, the timeline took two months in order to build this table. And during that, I just didn't have the wit in order to do video because I'm sitting there trying to figure out how the hell to do it. This video is going to explain how I did it, lessons I learned, and kind of general ideas. So if you're interested in ever building a live edge table or just how the process of creation happens, check this out. But otherwise, thank you so much and let's enjoy making a video. This is a general overview of the table. I like using a SketchUp model before I get started because it helps me to lay out the table, figure out what components I need, and more importantly, it does allow me the ability to figure out kind of how much wood I'll actually need thanks to plugins like Cutlist. Now, what I needed to do was make something modular so I can take each of these things apart. The legs are separated, the center and top spread, like stretcher can all be taken apart, and then the table top can also come off the base. Nice part about that is because in San Francisco, generally you don't have a real wide door you can go through. So it's 32 inches and the biggest width is about 36. And also the table's about 31 inches tall. That's kind of a problem because you can't fit it through most places. However, by making sure you can remove all the parts down to their pieces, it makes it super simple. Before I go to the, jump, the lumber yard, I like to make sure I take each component and make an uh, individual note of it and kind of get a good idea. So when I go to the lumber yard, I could say, hey, what do I need for this middle stretcher? Oh, there's a really nice piece that I found and it's about the same size, perfect. So this is a good idea for anyone who's trying to go through and make a table or make any project, learn how to use SketchUp just a little bit or even just a nap back of the napkin and you'll be good to go. So let's get started with the build video. Selection of the piece that's gonna be the top is actually really critical. It will help define a lot of the character of the table itself, as well as the feel, because you want a nice hard wood, so that way you're not gonna have a lot of like marks from uh, forks and whatnot. This is a two and a quarter inch thick, eight foot slab of alder wood that I got up at Heritage Salvage in Penaluma, California. Why I chose this particular piece was because it was really pretty and I like the figure on it. So what I wanted to do was ask them to, as you see those lines, I wanted to rip off that right side and then cut it in half. So those slabs are actually four foot wide and then there's one nice clean line that I can use to push them both together in order to make the tabletop. This is a shot of the slab I used for the benches. It's a piece of Norfolk pine and it had beautiful figuring. You see those cross uh, diagonal check marks? That's actually in the grain. This tree sucked up a whole ton of minerals and other stuff while it was living. And you could see it, there was black and yellow and orange streaks all over it. These, these really turned out to be amazing benches, but the piece itself was just had a lot of character to it. So it's just the full width, and then kind of shaping it so that way it can be made the benches. The, the black squares are actually contact information because when you give this place uh, work to do, they may need to call you in case something. So that's why the phone number and last name are printed out. After getting the alder wood back, I wanted to see what it looked like when I put the top together. Now that middle seam that's running right through the middle still needs to be jointed, so we need to use our jointer. The only problem is normally what you do is you face joint, which means the flat part that would be the tabletop needs to get jointed first in order to get a nice flat surface. Then you put together the middle in order to therefore have a nice clean 90 degree angle. Trick is you can't do it. So I did my best on the jointer. It didn't turn out perfect as you'll see. What you're looking at here is the bottom side of the tabletop. There is a big gap kind of right down the middle because the jointer wasn't able to get a perfect 90 degree. So it's off by about a degree, but that does create an angle. That angle was filled with a bunch of glue. The two pieces were joined with biscuits, so about 10 biscuits running down that seam. Uh, lots of glue and clamps to hold everything nice and flat, or at least as flat as I can get it. And this is what it looked like when I flooded that seam with glue. The glue will shrink, so you have to do this multiple times. I would recommend if you're gonna do this to do it with epoxy, but we're gonna do that in a different step anyway. I took the belt sander out just a bit to kind of get a little bit of the actual uh, crap on the outside down so I could see what the top looked like and it's beautiful. This also kind of helps me see how many cracks I had. I had a ton of cracks. 
My way of trying to get this thing level was not to use a sander because the sander is a really inefficient way. You should be using a router jig, which you can look up. I put you a link to what a router jig is for leveling. The only thing you need to do is kind of get at least one face sort of flat. So I chose the bottom and that's why I scraped it down with all the pencil, took my belt sander out and just sanded it down flat. After lots and lots of belt sanding, this is what the bottom looked like. I did a little bit of shaping on the edges and got rid of the square piece that was on the left side, so make it kind of look more live. And then I did the same to the top just a bit because I wanted to see what the grain was and more importantly, seeing how many holes I really needed to fill. Live edge tables are slabs. So if slabs are gonna have holes, cracks, and other things you're gonna need to fill, my suggestion is using a two-part epoxy that's 24 hours set, really slow, because you need it to be able to go through all the cracks without hardening, and it's gonna take you a while to get the epoxy in. Now, this is the bottom side of the slab, and this is me filling in all the cracks and holes. My suggestion is on the other opposite side, so in this case the top, going through with packing tape and putting it over each of the cracks, because you don't know when you start putting that epoxy, how far down those cracks are gonna go, and you don't want a huge pool of epoxy at the bottom of your workbench, that would kinda of suck. The most efficient way to level a slab like this is to use a router jig. Router jig for leveling will allow you to use a, like to level a piece per, almost perfectly, uh, no matter how wide it is, at least as wide as you can put those two by fours. So what we're creating here is a coplanar surface. So those bottom two by fours support the side rails. The side rails uh, are where we're gonna make the magic. There are three points on that, which the top is a half inch. Um, the rails are a half inch above the rails in three points. The fourth point is where we're gonna be making a move to either increase the size up or down in order to make a coplanar surface. So when those two strings touch in the middle, uh, and that means that there's an X, and then you put a couple pieces of the same rope to make sure that there's one string length apart, as soon as you move that fourth piece up and down, it will then very minimally touch, and that's when you know you have a completely flat surface. There are many videos on YouTube about explaining this exactly. I would highly recommend looking at the Wood Whisperers one on how to make a leveling jig because he goes into much more detail than I'll go to it right now. This is the aftermath of just leveling one side. There was a ton of material that came off. As you see, there's that router sled that's used. So basically, it's just a little box that holds your router perfect so it doesn't move left or like like back or forth, but just moves left to right. And you take the biggest straight bit you got that has a nice big piece. In this case, I bought myself a one and a half inch wide straight cutting, like a mortising bit, and just went through the whole thing. Um, move your router down to the lowest point on the tabletop. So that way, the whole thing will be level to that lowest point. If you do everything perfectly, if you're getting those rails like even, this part will be fine. After you get it off the router jig, it's gonna have a lot of little uh, straight marks just because of the way the router bit runs. So you have to go through the process of leveling it with sanding. This is what it'll look like after you're done. This was taken from 80 grit to 120, 220, to 320. Now, you don't need to go to 320, but I, I like it because look how shiny that thing is. I haven't really placed a lot of emphasis on the base, just because the base could be so many different things. Uh, it's included in the SketchUp plan, which is in the description below. You can download and look at the dimensions. Uh, it was constructed using ash, and it's gonna be wicked strong, as you see there. It's about, I think, 29, 28 inches tall from top to bottom, and it's constructed out of three layers of ash, which is, uh, well, just four-quarter ash. Uh, that's just the general look of it, but here's what the whole thing looks like together. So there's two legs, a center spanner, which I put in, uh, but not the top, because you want to sand the legs and the top and everything first before cutting the lap joint that's going to go to connect the middle. Otherwise, if you did it now and then you sanded, your perfectly fitting piece would be way too loose. And finally, I drilled the mounting holes, and from the mounting holes on the legs, drilled just a small little one into the, the top, so that way I could see where to put the threaded inserts. I used 
three eighths inch um, 20 thread threaded inserts because I, I don't want to use wood screws because wood screws have the potential to grab in real big and deep and I could poke through the top of the slab. And if I use threaded inserts, then I can take out machine screws anytime I want and the tabletop will never get hurt. Now look at that sexy top, really shiny, really lovely. And it's on a completed table, look at that. I suggest getting the table all the way to the point where it's basically done well before you start planning any of the benches or chairs you're gonna make because you need to base the height of your chairs off of the table you just created because if you go with the idea that it's gonna be perfect right up to your drawings, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. In this case, I found that my table is actually an inch and seven, <laughs> an inch and a two, no, inch and three quarters too tall because I forgot to factor in the, <laughs> the top when I was doing the initial calculations for the legs. So had to make the benches a bit taller, but it's okay. And there's the table totally mocked up and built with benches. Now the benches took me a lot more time than I anticipated. Basically what I had was I had this really wide uh, board, which was nine inches wide and two inches thick. And I cut that up into 20 inch sections. So that way I can make sides for the benches. The runners that run through the top and the bottom are pieces of poplar. All I did was just tip my table saw up, carve out a lap joint for each, shove those in, and just put a drywall screw through it. They're ones that connect the, so that top rail is actually connected to the top of the, to the bottom of those bench tops using threaded inserts. So again, if I ever feel like I can always take off the top and the bottom and replace the bottoms with something else. I broke down the table and started finishing it. Now, as you can see, the bottom right one is a finish, top left hasn't been touched yet. The finish I chose to use was Armor Seal oil-based polyurethane. I did two parts of the polyurethane oil-based and one part uh, mineral spirits. So I guess one-third mineral spirits, two-thirds Armor Seal, which is oil-based polyurethane that I used. Uh, the reason to do that uh, is because I talked to a lot of guys that do a lot of slab work, and they said that if you thin it out just a bit, it'll help to run more evenly and spread itself, and more importantly, fill all the little cracks and weird spots uh, without having the possibility of getting too streaky. I did five to six coats of that, sanding between coats, and then the final coat I went through with a, a foam block with 400 grit sandpaper, real gentle to get all the nibs off, then came back with 4 aught steel wool and a little bit of soapy water and just kind of took all that out and made it really shiny. And with everything finished, I reassembled it upstairs and there's my new kitchen table. I designed this to fit the space perfectly, but you can of course change it to fit your space. As you can tell, look at that beautiful piece. It sits in there real nice. The benches are really pretty, and it, it took a couple days, even with it upstairs, to get all the smell of the polyurethane out, just because it just takes a while. Now, check this out. This is why I did benches. Bam. Those things butt right up underneath the, the table without any problem at all, and create a nice, like a space, so if you needed to, you could push that table to the left uh, to give more room on the right side, or you can pull it out or do whatever you want, but it's a really compact, little table once you put all the pieces together even though it's four foot long by about 36 inches wide at the top at the widest part of the table so what lessons did i learn from making this table this table took a ton of time i thought it was gonna originally take about five days but when you're using live edge and actual slabs not dimensional lumber like you get at a lumber yard you have to factor in it's not totally flat. There are lots of cracks. There are things you need to fix. There are lots of little weirdnesses about the slab. Now the slab is basically the huge part of what makes this table amazing. The base on the other hand could be anything. You don't have to go through building a elaborate base like I did that can be pulled apart and stuff, but you could just spend your time uh, just go get a metal base or something and then just you're good to go. You could just put tables in there or whatnot but really the emphasis has to be on expectations it's going to take you more time than you thought i thought five days was what it was going to take it took me two months okay 
So uh, it was good and I got to learn a ton. Lots about sanding, lots about routing, working with the wood, learning that I need to kind of let it flow and to kind of also, you know, I might, one day I might have had it epoxied, but it's okay. I come back only to find that all the epoxy dripped out through a hole that was somewhere else that I never knew, or there was a huge cavity or something. So you're gonna have a lot of that, and each time I did it, it took a day, because it's one hour, it's not like five minute epoxy, it's 24 hour epoxy. Uh, you, so you need to kind of check your expectations as far as what you think. Uh, I, you know, it's all good. I love the hell out of this project. It's a great table, everyone enjoys it. So, it, you know, if you made it this far in the video, why don't you put down Woodworker X in the comments below. Uh, it's not generally like what I do as far as gaming videos, but this is the other side of what I do. You know, you work on computers and do video stuff all the time. You need to kind of take your body and do something else to kind of reset your brain. So in this case, lots of physical labor, which is what woodworking really is. So if you liked it, uh, give me a like, give me a comment, subscribe, and do a share on your friend face if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.